Your slumber is interrupted by the roaring clouds above you. And before it starts pouring, you need to get yourself some shelter. We need some building material. Being a smart student that you are, you immediately realize that you will need concrete. How can you make concrete on this island? Seashells. Seashells are abundant. Powder them and you have calcium carbonate because seashells are actually made up of calcium carbonate. You heat this powder and you end up with calcium oxide. This is also known as burnt lime or quick lime. This is one of the main ingredients for making cement. This mixed with volcanic rocks, as volcanic rocks are rich in magnesium, will give you cement. Throw in some pebbles and sand and you have concrete. And there you are ready to build your house. So what was important in this chemical reaction was calcium carbonate was breaking down into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. To represent this chemical equation, CaCO3 is going to go ahead and give you CaO and CO2. This kind of reactions have a special name to it. And the name is very obvious. It is known as decomposition. In this reaction, you can observe that a single reactant breaks down to give you simpler products. This is a decomposition reaction. To generalize such an equation, we can represent it like this. AB is going to give rise to A plus B. That is, single reactants give rise to multiple products. Now that you have understood this kind of a reaction, we will look at some more examples so that decomposition becomes very, very, very clear to you. Now, let's consider the decomposition of uh, ferrous sulfate, okay? The representation is like this. 2FeSO4.7 H2O will give you Fe2O3 plus SO2 plus SO3 plus 14 H2O. Now, since it's decomposition, you need something to be given as a trigger for this reaction, right? In this case, it is heat. Now, let's perform this experiment to actually see what happens. What you need to do is take some ferrous sulfate crystals in a boiling cube. And don't forget to note the color of the ferrous sulfate crystals. They're green in color, right? Now, heat the boiling cube over the flame of a burner till you can observe a color change. And what are the colors of the, what is the color of the crystals after heating? And why is that happening? This is what we need to understand. So what can you actually observe? One, the green color of the ferrous sulfate crystals are changing to a black residue. And this is ferric oxide represented as Fe2O3, which is a solid. Then you can also see fumes coming from the mouth of the test tube. This is burning sulfur from sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide. Now, the odor would be similar to the smell you will get after loads of firecrackers are burst during the valley. And finally, you can also see some droplets at the mouth of the test tube. This is water. Example two is the decomposition of lead nitrate. So what we'll do is we'll actually heat up lead nitrate and see what happens. Lead nitrate will decompose into lead oxide, nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. To represent that in an equation, PbNO3 twice when heated will give you PbO plus NO2 plus O2. And I'm sure that you've already observed that this is not a balanced equation. So let's just balance this for practice, okay? So how do you go about doing that? We're going to balance this using the shortcut which we discussed earlier. Okay, so what we'll first do is to put the coefficients A, B, C and D. And let's equate the number of elements on the left and the right hand side. So first, let's, let's consider lead first. Okay, so if you consider lead, you get A is equal to B. Then next, if you consider N, nitrogen, you will get 2A is equal to C. If you consider oxygen, you get 6A is equal to B plus 2C plus 2D. Now, what we're going to do is, if you remember what I taught, taught you last time, make A equal to 1. Why? Because that's the largest compound, right? Lead nitrate is the largest compound. So make A is equal to 1. Then what do you get? When you substitute in these equations, you will get A is equal to 1, B is equal to 1, C is equal to 2, and D is equal to half. Don't worry, you're not stuck, okay? When you get a fractional value, what you simply need to do is to multiply it so that that fractional value becomes a whole number. So multiply it by 2, multiply everything by 2. So you get A is equal to 2, B is equal to 2, C is equal to 4, and D is equal to 1. So what is a balanced equation? It is 2 PbNO3 twice, giving you 2 PbO plus 4 NO2 plus O2. Add the physical states and your equation is balanced.